Y'all remember this chick, Gloria Velez, who had a little back and forth for beef with academics? DJ academics, like, are you, you're not even a DJ, so I don't know why you have DJ in your name. We'll, we'll get into that as well. But she was super sweet to you and super nice and calm and cordial telling you, please don't speak about my family. And you kept daggering her about it. So you're intimidated by a boss woman, facts because you was infuriated, the, the, the emotions, the, the, yo, he got up off his seat, y'all. You know, if he looked like he wanted to jump over a table to attack a woman that was sitting in his, you know, podcast. For these comments made by academics to her daughter-in-law on a Fresh and Fit podcast. Oh, you are alpha. I'm an uh, oh, alpha okay. woman. Okay. I'm dominant. That's what it is. Like, no, I don't fuck with no chick who sound like a nigga. That's just a hundred. I'm gonna just keep it a hundred with you. Wait. <laughs> no, wait. We not wait. Hold you on. don't have to, cause I'm not asking you to. Fuck no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So oh you're saying? God. Hold on. Hold on. You think I'm? Wait, wait. So you're saying that if I lose some weight and I become your broke ass bitch ass boyfriend, right? Oh, 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 shit. No. Huh? And I start fucking with a masculine bitch like you mm. with fake titties, mm. right? With a tattoo on your face i wish i could give you guys more of an origin story for gloria valas but that's essentially all i know her for now apparently she's was once a supermodel <laughs> that's like the 80s or 70s bro Feel me? our supermodels is ari fletcher and jada Wader, bro i don't know nobody else so apparently gloria valas started working for vlad tv shortly after her academics beef and their relationship started off pretty well she did three podcasts for vlad and I believe two of them went viral. The Cisco podcast and the Neo podcast both went viral. But oddly enough, after her first three interviews on Vlad TV went viral and did pretty well, she hasn't really dropped anything since and we haven't seen any new content from Gloria Velez on Vlad TV. And folks just thought that was odd. And we really didn't have any answer because Vlad TV really runs a tight ship. But it looks like we finally got the answers that we were looking for. Because Gloria Velez took to her Instagram and she broke down why she hasn't been doing content on Vlad TV and she won't be doing any more content on Vlad TV because she essentially has quit. Blessings, Kingdom family. Um, a lot of you have been asking what's going on with the Gloria Velez podcast on Vlad TV. So um, the agreement between me and Vlad is that I'm an independent contractor, meaning I can leave whenever I please and he can go his way as well at any point in time. We want to see how we work together, um, if we're compatible in working together and how the shows go. All three shows did great, um, but we're having some difficulty of um, agreeing who should be on my podcast. As her situation is not unusual. As a matter of fact, it's pretty standard, right? If I'm doing interviews on No Jumper, well, No Jumper decides who is worthy enough of being able to come on the platform and be interviewed by me, meaning I just can't go out and bring Pookie from down the block and interview him. That's because I'm doing direct interviews on No Jumper. If I had my own podcast on No Jumper, let's say the Poetic Flacco Show, then Adam and No Jumper gives you the creative power to bring whoever you want to bring on on your individual podcast. So she didn't have her own podcast on Vlad TV. She was an interviewer on Vlad TV. And her situation is easily identifiable because when you look at her uploads, it doesn't say the Gloria Velaz podcast. It says the Cisco interview or the Neo interview. As guest, um, I have, he turned down so many people um, from athletes to comedians, to rappers, to R&B legends. Um, even reality show stars that are on TV. Um, so he's making it difficult to produce content because he keeps saying no. As a creative, I understand the frustrations and I would definitely be championing for her under different circumstances. Meaning if Vlad TV brought her on for her to have her own podcast and for her to give her opinions and chop it up and speak with people, then I would say, yo, Vlad, you foul, right? Like you should let this woman be a creative and do what she want to do because it's her own podcast, it's her own brand. Let her handle that. But unfortunately for her, she was hired for a job. And her job was to interview people because Vlad TV is one man and can't interview 100 different people a day. And you got a monthly salary for it. Not a profit split. A monthly salary, which will scream employee, contractor, et cetera, et cetera. So this isn't a situation of a creative wanting creative freedom. This is a situation of an employee not really knowing her role and thinking she's bigger than what she really is. Right, because if Vlad TV thinks, yo, that this person won't perform well on my channel, 
he knows more about the analytics of his channel than you. So he should be able to determine, bro, you want to interview this athlete and that athlete and this R&B legend, bro. They're not entertaining enough to get any views on my channel. Sorry, can't do it. So I'm um, kind of stuck. He only gave me a handful of people he will allow to be on the show on that platform, Vlad TV. So with that said, um, I've been going back and forth with Vlad and uh, individual that works for Vlad of my concerns and um, that I'm thinking of moving on um, to another platform. Uh, initially they said, don't, you know, we're gonna give you more creative control, but that never happened. So now I'm expressing myself um, that I'm going to start looking for another platform. Other people have already hit me up on other platforms that are interested. I don't know how true it is that other platforms is reaching out to platform her, but if that's true, yo, the market sets your worth, right? So if the market is saying that she's really valuable, then, you know, she's really valuable. Now, she also expounded on something that Vlad did that was really foul. Now, even I had to agree that this was foul of Vlad and this completely broke her trust. Without even knowing that I was looking. Um... Yeah, what's so crazy is that, you know, um, even certain people that I asked to be on the show, he said no, end up on his show, not recently. Dude, I thought that was a little shady because um, you told me no, and then you end up interviewing them. There's two ways to look at this. Did Vlad tell her that person ain't big enough to be interviewed on this platform and told her no? Or did Vlad tell her, yo, you can't interview that person because I want to do it? You see, like, if Drake wanted to do an interview at No Jumper and not set up the Drake interview, Adam is not about to sit back <laughs> and allow me to interview Drake on his platform without him. It's not happening because it's Drake. It's super shysty what Vlad did if it's true, but I understand the person being big enough to where Vlad is like, yo, I understand you got the connection, but I want to interview them myself. So I'm going to have to take that one from you. It's shysty, right? But, you know, you have to deal with that when you're working under somebody. So with that said, I think it's final that we go our separate ways. I'm grateful that he gave me an opportunity to let me shine. And that's what I did. And I'm ready to shine elsewhere. Vlad TV did indeed respond to this when he was on Academics Podcast. And this is what Vlad TV had to say about it. So, so for example, um, we had a podcast with Gloria Velez. Uh, we did three episodes with her. And we did uh, Neo... Uh, TK Kirkland and Cisco. I want to pause it here then and say that I was wrong. Then I'm wrong. If Vlad TV is calling the podcast, if Vlad TV is acknowledging that she had her own podcast on Vlad TV, then Vlad TV is 100% wrong to try to dictate who she brings on her own podcast, her personal podcast, right? Because if she owns the podcast and she's licensing it out to Vlad TV, then you shouldn't try to stifle that or stop her creative process. To me, that's foul and that's flagrant. So if this was a podcast, He's 100% wrong. Let her cook on her podcast and let her go through her creative process and make the content she wanted to make. Uh, they were filmed in Miami. The Neo interview went, what you would call viral. Like TMZ picked it up. There were some comments he made how he doesn't believe that, you know, 12 year old kids should be able to transition to being trans and, and so forth. The parents should come in and say something and it was controversial. So it was like all these things happened and whatever. So it, it seemed. I think to Gloria that like, oh, these interviews are blowing up and they're doing great. And they're, they're, you know, they're on all these platforms and everything else like that. Going viral doesn't mean profitable all the time. So this is the nonsense I've been talking about, right? You see the power structure, yes, because Vlad has been at the top of the food chain for way too long now, right? So Vlad is a part of the power structure. See, the power structure will go out of his way to F over independent creators and take food out their mouths. You see, Vlad TV attempting to diminish what a viral interview does for his platform is just a tactic to make sure she doesn't know what she's worth. Vlad TV's argument is just in such bad faith, I'm not even gonna try to intellectualize it, bro. You know, Vlad knowing everybody knows that the Benefits or success of a viral interview isn't just represented by the views the interview do on YouTube at that one particular time, bro. Sometimes it means that, sometimes it doesn't. You know, what I had to explain to her that the three interviews that we filmed uh, for her, after you count the production costs, we took losses on all of those videos. Maybe Gloria was right, bro, because this is coming off as snake oilsy and just such bad faith. Because Vlad TV is too smart for this. Like, he, bro, he's really intelligent, he's too smart. Bro, Vlad TV has to know. <laughs> like, he has to know, bro. You're not losing money on that content, especially if it's viral. Just think about it. All right, so Vlad TV says it didn't turn a profit. 
when, like, when do you stop counting? Do you stop counting after a week of the interview being out or after a month or a year? So if the interview doesn't turn a profit after a week, but it turns a profit in a year, does it still not count as a profitable interview? If you spend, let's say, $5,000 to produce the content and the content makes you $4,000 in a month, but then two years later, all right, the 200 clips you upload of that particular interview then made you $20,000, do you still not count as a profitable interview? Like, Vlad TV speaking as if, like, he can judge or gauge whether interview being profitable or not after a month to me is just crazy and it's bad faith and Vlad knows it's bad faith, man. Now I'm starting to think maybe Gloria does have a point, man, all right? But while you guys are here, man, let me know in the comment section, but also click on the video somewhere on my screen to find out why Brother Polite is a never-ending nightmare after being convicted for doing this to his girlfriend's 14-year-old daughter. I'm gonna see you guys in this video somewhere on my screen, all right? I'm out of here, folks. Peace.